again, to, well, she's female, called Cathy, she's in her fifties. She's married to Derek, who again is in his fifties. They have two or three children, uh, named Elizabeth, 23, and Debbie, 25. They have a pet called, called the Jack Russell, his name's Dougal. He's an accountant, and she's a volunteer in the church stroke shop. Uh, they drive a Volvo, all the day in the south of France. He enjoys golfing and she enjoys cooking. They eat in harvesters and general run of mill pub chains. Uh, he, he would generally drink a bitter or an ale and she would go for a red wine. Uh, he reads the Express while she sits down with a woman's own. And they generally enjoy soaps or afternoon from Channel 5 films. And they enjoy the Beatles and music from the 60s. A very sensible couple. <laughs> <laughs> Any offers? Jaffa cakes? That sounds too exotic for them. No, it's all ginger nuts. I don't know what they've got, so don't look at me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the marine. <laughs> the the hobnob. The hobnob. No, no. no, no. The Rich tea, rich tea. Uh, yeah. rich tea. They sounded a rich tea couple. Yeah, nice. they sounded. I'm not pushing the boat out too much. I hope they were a nice brand. I, I can't necessarily promise they weren't Tesco's. I, I think they um, taste the same, rich tea. Do they? Yeah, no, no, I don't think they, uh, they have different qualities, isn't they? No, 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 no. You're a connoisseur of rich teas. <laughs> okay, and um, finally. It's a dip, okay. Um, our biscuit could have been for a child, but. We've opted for uh, a middle-aged lady. Um, her name's Elaine. She's divorced. Um, her husband's name was John. Um, she's got two children, Julie and Andy. They're both um, in their 30s. She had them when she was uh, quite young. She's got a dog. Um, it's a terrier. She works as a dinner lady at the local school. Um, she drives an old Fiat Punto. Um, she likes to get a cheap last minute break in Spain. Her hobbies are gardening, but she likes a bit of salsa as well. Um, she drinks at Costa and she likes to a little bit of adventure with a cappuccino and a latte. Uh, <laughs> <Don't> we, <laughs> when it comes to newspapers and magazines, she goes for the free ones um, that come out and she likes the special offers from Aldi. Can't beat a bargain. Um, her favourite <coughs> TV programmes are thrillers, crime shows, something like Poirot or CSI, she loves that. Uh, favourite music is Barry Manilow. <laughs> you watched it last so, night, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <I fit. laughs> so there you go. Okay, who is so, she? I thought it was there. She could have been a Jaffa cake there with her salsa and a bit of a kick. No. But if she thought her cappuccino was an adventure, maybe yeah. not. Yeah. 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 Is she one of those ones which has got the um, sultanas or the fruiting? I can't remember what they're called. No, not the garibaldi. Fruiting nuts. Yeah, the fruit, 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 no, obviously not. I would say a chocolate hot some kind of chocolate. Some kind of chocolate. Any offers, Ken? <coughs> don't look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the exact name, she knows. <laughs> yeah. I think it would be more of a child. You want to say? Yeah, it's a jammy dodger. Jammy dodger. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think I would say children or maybe a teenager more for mm. that maybe because it's a bit naughty. It seems a bit like it could be quite fattening because the jam in the middle, but probably is actually quite a bland biscuit in many ways, mm. isn't it? That's got a pattern on top as well, isn't it? A bit like the. <laughs> we just um, have a beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> playing about not before you even know what you're trying to do, in a way. Um, so, oh yes, this is a lot of wordy stuff. And as I say, they're my notes, really, so you probably can't read that. 
I shall read it to you anyway. Um, because it, it's about this. There it is. There's the little devil. Um, and this is my telephone. And the telephones have been cropping up a little bit as well on U101 on designs that I like and designs that I don't think anyone's got a frustrating one. Maybe I haven't seen it yet, but maybe there are. But there's quite a few designs I like which involve these things or these things or bits of this stuff. Um, and the designs that frustrate are very fascinating as well. But anyway, this one is due for renewal. It's come up for its contract. Um, right this week I think so it's been on my mind to do something about it to try and sort it out my son's been telling me what to do I found I mean this is just a cut and paste off the um, it's not off Nokia's original site it's off um, it's actually off an external review of the Nokia 6700 when it came out and I like the language it said I'll read it I don't know if you can see it anyway. Nokia 6770 classic it's a handset designed to take over the mantle of the hugely popular Nokia 6300. And the Finns have been busy sprucing up the design and wedging in more features than you can shake a mobile stick at. It fits in the hand very nicely with the slim bill still wide enough to give access to all the flush keys when you need to. Need to. Almost the same size as the 6500 Classic but slightly thicker and quite a lot heavier, the 6700 feels like it's been hewn from solid steel. Sure about that. There are a few handsets that have such quality and feel as this one. It's a traditional classic style mobile, but it doesn't look or feel like the ugly duckling, even when placed next to the latest generation of touchscreen beauties. Nokia at their very best with this classic style handset, and they look like they've pulled out all the stops for this one. The keypad is flat, easy to use, no missed key digits. You'll be able to text quickly and easily with Nokia's tried and tested T9 predictive text and easy menu. The navigation button is also a joy to use. The display, this is actually some external ob uh, um, objective reviewer. The display is the same as the one on the 657, 16 million colors, 240, 320 pixels, but with the size increase to 2.2 inches. It's hard to find a lot wrong with the design. The design word crops up a fair bit with, of this Nokia 6700 Classic. It certainly looks the business, and if this is the kind of phone you're after, then you're not gonna find a lot to dislike. I've had it a couple of years, and I have a lot to dislike. Because what they don't say on this is that um, it's as slippery as a bar of soap in the shower, and that it flies across the room at the first available opportunity. Also, that the screen is made so thin that the first time it does fly across the room, the first available opportunity, it smashes it and cracks the screen on there. Um, so I've grown to dislike this little thing that's in my pocket quite a lot um, because I can't hold on to it. It's very, very thin, it's very, very small, it's very, very slippery and so I lose it a lot um, and I'm forever having to redial my own number to find it underneath the seat in the front of the car or upstairs or in the, I don't know where it might be, down the back of the sofa. A phenomenon that we never really knew about with telecommunications before having to track down your phone all the time. <laughs> but there it is. Um, it's a slippery thing. So what I had to do, it's not on here at the moment, but I've um, adapted this phone by putting bits of sticky tape down the edge to make it... You couldn't actually design something so slippery. So I I, I've sort of put bits of tape down the side. I bought one of those little condoms for it to start with. That was the first thing I did. Within the first two weeks. You have to buy the rubber condom to make it a different, a different, uh, a relatively thicker thing than um, than it was, and that, but that wore off, and then I couldn't read the keys. So my battles with technology, I don't know if they're mirrored by others, but um, this being a very online, totally online course, um, I thought we'll just explore a little bit about that, um, which made me just in the past week, because it's coming up for a new one, I don't know what to do. Um, it's made me look and read about phones a bit, um, and this is, it is, um, I've actually got one of these phones as well, and I, that's in the living room that we use, um, the Bell and Dreyfus 500, this is a 1949 one, um, but mine is not anything like that early, 
Uh, but it's just a different sort of experience. I was reading a wonderful thing in this book. I don't know if you know that book. The Uncommon Life of Common Objects. Um, but it says, if news of the world was to come, it should come through a solid and substantial conveyance, such as this. The handsome of the unit was shaped so as to withstand being slammed back into the cradle. That sounds good. That's where to keep technology. <laughs> where to put it. I mean, you can't do that with this. You slam it down to the floor and then you've got to go and buy another one, I'm afraid. <laughs> so, what do you do with all your frustration? Sorry? Building obsolescence. Building obsolescence, absolutely. So the most we can do with this is, you know, how can we overpower this little thing which gets into our every nooks and crannies? This is not what this talk is about, really, but uh, it's obviously a, a sore point with me. That the, the biggest slamming into the cradle that we can do is to turn it off. And that just, that's our the maximum, in a sense, we have over, over our technology. But uh, it's a very nice little book, anyway, this. Um, and there's an article on various everyday objects the chair, the packet of Kellogg's cornflakes, the telephone. Um, and it talks about telephones. It was written, actually, I see, in 2004. So it's already, in you know, telecommunications terms, hugely out of date. Um, so there's the, the phone. So there's my dilemma, is how to cope with um, this little slippery herring and that thing, um, and where the two come together, and how I cope with technology, and this sort of technology, which now can bring an email to, <coughs> to my bedside, wake me in the morning and tell me all these messages, especially now I'm an online tutor, um, uh, and last thing at night. So how we all cope and interact with that. But interaction was what I really wanted to blurb on about. Um, and I think in Germany these are called Handis, they're known as Handis, which is exactly what it does, it fits into your hat. Um, and that's what my complaint is about it. It's, uh, it's, it fits beautifully into the hand, so beautifully it slides straight out of the hand. So, and because we're working with hands, and because we're working with designs that you like and designs that you find frustrating, and often the two kind of cross over in a very interesting way. I love those frustrating photographs that you're putting up, by the way. They're the best ones. The designs I like, I think, yeah, I'd like an iPhone too. Hell. But uh, they're, they're all the frustrating ones are wonderful. The wires all wrapped around. I don't know who's who's the wires. Hairdryers. The wires. The wires are the worst. <laughs> I hate the wires. And the hair dryers. Yeah. Um, yeah, but wouldn't really the iPhone 2 also slide out of your hand? Because they're very pebble. I don't well, know. I, I, I don't know. They're quite weighty, aren't they? Yeah, they're quite weighty. Yeah. And, yeah. and I haven't got And you can have a nice case for them, like a leather case. Well, there you go. You can buy that as well. Oh, is that one? There it is. Is it your favourite design? Yes. Is it? Yes. Is it your favourite design? Yes. It's much better. Get one of these. I know. This is too they small. Are, They've yeah. got too small. It's too small. The, the, the screen is too small. Them. They don't. Oh, really? So you, re you wrapped it up, really? The, the two combined well, technologies having, yeah, come having together had a in the iPhone? dropped one um, and then had them to have it replaced. That's why it's got this little... Little pink on them like this. <laughs> and also it means that you know, if everyone in the family's got the same phone, yeah. they know this one's mine. Oh yeah. Well they've all got blackberries in mine, so they'll tell you not to get that. But I can't no, quality keep it. Anyway. Okay, so this is your hand project. I just copy and paste again, decide how you'd like to show your hand and you've been doing that. So it's about hand, about interaction. I guess that's what these days are about, because we were discussing that at lunchtime. You know, what is what is these days about? These four days you have as part of your course. Um, which you don't have to come to, but you can come to. But it's a totally 100% online course. So today seemed to be very much about something, I don't know, you can do something, it's about meeting, it's about putting faces to people and about saying hello. Um, and so it's about touching, I suppose, each other. And um, the touch element is something that's very important to me and how we think and around and about touching stuff when we're dealing um, in an interactive virtual environment. That's an opportunity to do today. So we're going to do some touching and stuff. Um, and it's going to grow from hands. And I want to think about handles. So handles. That's why I called this today, getting a handle on 101. 